Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Put that up. Put that up. No, for what did I do? What you do? It's your mother, right? Are you serious? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Are you serious? Stop fucking playing with me. Nick, are you serious? Stop playing with me, bro. All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza Wolf from the GMS New Jersey camp. And um, it's a quick topic, something short. I was uh, reading. And I wanted to touch on this this uh, this uh, book chapter verse, which is Amos five. All right, starting at the eighteenth verse. All right, and um, this topic mainly gonna be named around uh, the word judgment. Judgment. All right, now we got a quick Google search of the word judgment, and it says number one. The ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions, right? An era of judgment. You know, judgment can be used as far as making a decision, all right? But that's not the point. And the, uh, you know, that's not the point I want to make. Of Well, it is. You know, let me say it is because judgment you know, you can make a decision. It says the ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. So it's like you got to make a choice. All right. Now, number two, it says a Mitchell miss misfortune of calamity vowed as a divine punishment. All right. So what you reap is what you sow. The decision you make it, you know, it, uh, it determines the outcome, all right? Whether you receive a reward of righteousness or you receive a reward of wickedness, all right? So the actions you make, the decision you make, okay? The conclusion you make determines your judgment, all right? And judgment comes upon you through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as a what? A misfortune, a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment now i just want to see what it says about calamity right so calamity it says an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress or a disaster so basically calamity is a disaster it causes distress, and it's also an often sudden damage. You know, the Lord speak about that in um, in, um, in Sirach, all right, the fifth chapter. Let me see if I can pull that up. Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is a part of the Bible. Let's get uh, 5 and 1. Ecclesiasticus 5 and 1, it says, Set thou heart upon thy goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart, meaning don't be prideful. Don't be satisfied, and don't be prideful. Uh, verse three, and say not who shall control me for my works, for the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Any man that thinks he's the shit, 
you know, think his shit don't stink, so to say, you know, that walks around with great pride like these Edomites. It says the Lord will surely revenge thou pride. Verse four, say not I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me. For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. All right. And that long suffering, you know, the Lord have, uh, you know, he's not going to let you go. All right. Meaning you're not going to be, the Lord is not pacified for your sins. So let's read that again. Say not I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me for the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Meaning either, you know, if you haven't been punished for what you've done, like these Edomites, as an example, all right, the Lord is reserving you for the day of judgment. All right. And that's what this topic is about. It's about judgment. All right. Now, this is calamity. So, but um, let's get back. It says concerning pro propetition, be, with not, be without fear to add sin unto sin. You know, this is a, a willing, sinful person. All right. Willingly sinning. You know, don't have a care in the world. And, you know, they may say they're, this is a person that really don't believe in the most high, have no faith. All right. They don't believe that a consequence will come, you know, unto their actions. So be not without fear to add sin unto sin because you're supposed to fear. Yahweh watch me. I was shy. That's key. All right. That controls you and your flesh. This is why the laws, the heavenly father laws was put in place. All right. To govern our flesh, to have fear unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, because if not, the Lord will bring calamity. He will bring calamity upon you if you break his law. And on a whole, as a nation of people, as a nation of being an Israelite, all right, Yahshua Allah, we suffered calamity. All right, we went through slavery, we still slaves. And now, you know, there's uh, what you call Jacob's trouble which is the last um, trouble that Israel is going to go through, all right, by the hands of Esau being the sword of the Lord, all right? Now, calamity, once again, an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress or disaster, all right? So concerning perpetition, be, be, without, be not without fear to add sin unto sin and say not his mercy is great, he will... Uh, he will be pacified for the multitudes of my sins for mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation resteth upon sinners. All right. So the Lord is not pacified for the multitudes of your sins. You know, this goes right along into the topic of uh, Amos five starting at 18. All right. Because the uh, government churches being a Baptist Jehovah witness. All right. Um, those of the government churches, the two thirds, all right, that's blind and to the knowledge of the Lord, that's ignorant to the, to the knowledge of the Lord, of this truth of who they truly are, you know, and knowing the Lord's name, you know, they think that, um, they're pacified. They pacified the Lord for the multitudes of their sins. You know, they teach that we all know what they teach. They teach that you can eat pork. You know, uh, Jesus, you know, first off, Jesus, which goes back to Serapis Christus, all right, or Cesare Borgia, okay, you know, that, uh, you know, that Edomite. But anyway, they believe that, you know, eating pork, you know, Jesus died for their sins and now they can eat whatever they want to eat. You know, they can, women can jump from man to man, you know, men, you know, could, uh, you know, do whatever they feel because why? They've been saved already. All right. They believe that Jesus Christ died and that they saved. You know, that so basically everything that the Lord died for, who they ignorantly call Jesus. All right. We call him Yahweh Shai by his true name. All right. They believe that he died so that they could do whatever they want. This is why you have a lot of homosexuals, transsexuals, and it plays along right into the agenda of which the Edomites, the Greeks, okay, they push forth their Greek culture here in uh, around the world, okay? So it says, and say not his mercy is great. 
he will be pacified for the multitudes of my sins. Because you have to keep the law to the best of your ability. You have to rehearse the righteous acts. Rehearsing the holy days. Rehearsing the Sabbath. All right. Which is the, uh, you know, the moon, the new moon, which is the Sabbath. Okay. Um, you know, rehearsing the laws. It says, for mercy and wrath come from him. Yes, indeed. And his indignation, which indignation means righteous anger, resteth upon sinners. So the Lord know how to preserve you for the day of wrath. All right. His righteous anger, it comes down upon the sinners. And uh, what's that? Amos, what's that? Amos 8. He speaks about all the sinners of his people shall die by the sword. So anyway, let's get to the point. Um, I'll get that scripture after this. Uh, oh, Amos 9 and 8. Now, this is uh, the point here. Why well, I pulled this. This is verse 7. It says, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For sudden, suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. All right. Let me read that one more time. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, all right, which is these, you know, those who hear the word, you, 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 you witness, you understand, you recognize the truth. Uh, all right, I didn't mean to do that, but you recognize the truth, you know, and they may tarry to turn to the Lord, to, to the truth, all right? You, pers you procrastinate it. It says, and put not off from day to day. Jake, do that. Because you got a lot of guys that like to cheerlead. You know, they like to cheerlead and say, you know, Shalom and all that. You know, they know of the truth and everything, right? It says, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thou security, key word, security. Everything is fine. Everything is going well. You and your woman is on an agreement. Y'all doing good. You know, you and your house. You can't see no wrong because you feel like you want to come up. It says, and in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. All right. Bringing us back to the word calamity, an event causing great and often sudden damage or distress, a disaster. All right. The Lord brings what calamity was calamity goes back into the word. What judgment? All right. A misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment, all right, by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And uh, let me get a quick scripture. I said I was going to get Amos 9 and 8. I want to get that real quick. And like I said, I want to make this quick. I'm trying to hold you too long. Some some short. Lord willing, uh, this lesson be edifying to those of the whole for elect. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. And uh, it reads, it says, um, behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. All right. So what is the Lord eyes? All right. He said that his eyes, okay, are upon the sinful kingdom. What is the sinful kingdom? America which is known in the scriptures as Babylon the Great. This is the most greatest sinfulest kingdom on the planet. Let me say that again. This is the most greatest and sinful kingdom on the planet. Okay? He says, I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Okay? Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, save the Lord. And Jacob goes back to what? The 12 tribes. His 12 sons who... Created nations, well, created tribes of one nation, I should say, to be more correct, all right, which are the Israelites, Yasha Allah, he, prince, power, meaning the men, the sons of the Israelites are the princes of the Most High, okay, and the, the Israelite women are what, the daughters of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, which play along into order, man over woman, woman over children, and Yahweh Shai over the over uh, the man and woman, which represents the body, okay? Because man and woman supposed to be one twine, all right? And that man is the head of the body, but Yahweh Shai is the head of the man and woman, which is the church, 
Okay. So he says, save and I will not dest utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Meaning he's going to save what? A remnant, an election. It says, for lo, I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among all nations. Like as corn is shift in the sheave, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Because the Lord is going to, he's going to, he's going to shift, but save the elect. Okay. And the elect right now is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay. It says all the sinners, this is why I pulled the scripture going back to sinners, right? All the sinners of my people, notice it said my people, it didn't say of the world. All right. It said my people, because what is the Lord determining? What is the Lord? Uh, who is the Lord's people? The Israelites. Okay. Which is Amos 3 and 1. It fully explains that. I get that after this. It says, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. What is the sword? Okay, you can, this is ultimately Esau. You know, his technology, his weapons, his guns, all right, his troops, his teeth. All right, the Lord is using these Edomites to, uh, to uh, uh, finish up this punishment for you Israelites. That's why you go into Jeremiah speaks of what? Jacob's trouble. Okay, he said, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, okay, notice that they say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So these are the ones with pride. These are these, uh, uh, what you call these uh, Israelites that are in these Christ, you know, into Christianity, being a Muslim, being Jehovah's, Jehovah's witness, uh, wickedness, you know, these are you. All right. These is also uh, the fallout boys, man. OK, this is pride. This is what you say when you deny the truth, when you despise the messengers and the prophets that the Lord sent. You know, you scoffers, you take delight in your scorning. This is what you say, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us because you don't think the most High going to do anything to you. What's that? Uh, Romans three, where he said, um. Uh, what if some did not believe? Shall their un unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Okay. Uh, let me get one scripture, another precept real quick while we hear Amos, Amos 3 and 1. Now, this is Amos 3 and 1. It says, hear this word that the Lord Yahweh have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I have punished you for all your iniquities. All right. So this is why we've been punished. And this is why our people are in the conditions they are. You know, they, they're, in, they're in these, these uh, you know, low poverty conditions today. And now a lot of you are straight up, you know, Gentiles in the frame of mind. I mean, we all once were Gentiles, but you have the elect which is woken back up, which the Lord spoke about with Ezekiel, how he blew his breath on the dry bones. Okay. But the rest, you're blinded. All right. You picked up this American way. You're Americanized. You know, you've been in America too long. You know, your whole uh, concept of logic, uh, uh, reality is of what Esau taught you, you know, not really understanding how the most high works and who he have chosen as his people. You know, the Bible is our manuscript. The Bible is our history. Okay. And these Edomites, they, they stole it and they claiming it. And now we gotten it back. So anyway, it says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Lord did not ever deal, dealt with the Edomites. He never dealt with the Hamites. He never dealt with Ishmaelites. He never dealt with the Moabites. He never dealt with the Ammonites. Okay. He never dealt with the so-called white man, these Africans. Okay, Ishmael, he never dealt with the Chinese, the Japanese, and so on. All right, when you read the scriptures, the scriptures is all about the Israelites. Okay, there's not a point where, okay, the Lord used the Israelites in the very beginning. All right, and then all of a sudden we went off. He started to, you know, uplift. Let's say, let's say, okay, first the Lord started off with the Israelites. The Bible is not taught this way. Okay, the Bible, let me just hype, uh, let me say this together. Let me put, formulate my words together so I can. All right, the Bible doesn't, doesn't, um, the most high, 
have not dealt with the Israelites. And then the Israelites went off. And then all of a sudden he dealt with the Ishmaelites. And then the Ishmaelites went off. And then he dealt with the Edomites. And then the Edomites went off. And then he dealt with the Hamites. No, the Lord didn't do that. All right. Every time the Lord only dealt with the Israelites. You know, the only reason why these other nations are mentioned for one, because they are slaves. All right. They were made for us. And number two is because we went off as a people. So the Most High raised up these other nations to conquer us. All right. To whip us back into shape. To basically come back to the Heavenly Father. And ultimately, Edomites, Edom, Esau. All right. He's that sword, that whooping stick that's going to get us perfect. You know, make us perfect. Make us come back to the Lord. All right. Which is the elect and make us perfect through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and his word. All right. So. All right, with that being said, um, is there another precept? All right, so judgment, right? Judgment, uh, a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment. So now, let's go from there and get the actual scripture. Like I said, I want to make this quick. Lord willing, it's edifying. This is Amos chapter 5 and 18. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So for all of you that thought the Lord was Jesus Christ, some Edomite, some so-called white man, you know, coming back to give you a cupcake, you know, and to bring everybody up under him and to, uh, you know, uh, be humble unto you and give you love. Well, you're mistaken, all right, because you don't read the scriptures. You've been blinded. It says, woe unto you. Woe means death and destruction, all right? And um, I just want to see something real quick. Let's see something real quick. Because I know this scoffer, he says, woe don't, doesn't mean he <laughs> the scoffer. Uh, fat bastard you know y'all guys brothers in the knowing you know who that is he said woe didn't mean destruction now this is a quick google search a great sorrow or distress things that cause sorrow or distress troubles what's that calamity that will be judgment calamity all right woe in the bible means death and destruction all right it means great sorrow and distress things that cause sorrow or distress troubles which is great destruction. All right. So I just wanted to bring that up. It says, uh, Amos 5 and 18, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You got a lot of these uh, Israelites, which are Gentiles in the frame of mind. All right. They want to see the day of the Lord, but they're not right. They don't even know the true name of the Lord. They don't even know who they are as a people. They still living in the world, doing everything that the world uh, uh, gives them. You know, they're carnal. It says, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. All right, because the Lord is not coming to give a cupcake to a homosexual, all right, to a transsexual, all right? The Lord is coming back to destroy women, children, and kids, all right? Um, let's see something. This is Ezekiel chapter 9 and 4. And real quick, it says, and the Lord said, and Yahweh, and, the, and Yahweh said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is a people before a place. All right. It says, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, that word mark there is not the same mark in Revelation 13, 16. This mark is in the Hebrew, which means the Wah, which represents exemption. So he's saying, and set an exemption upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. These are the are the men who sigh and that cry, you know, that cry out for righteousness. It says, and to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Okay, so you see that the Lord has sent the order of destruction. A, a, a order of he sent the order out for woe, for judgment, for calamity. All right, this is how our Lord get down. All right, our Lord is a man of war. Okay, Yahweh Shai is a man of war. 
The heavenly father is just like his son. His son, the son is like the father. All right. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children. Uh-oh. This shall offend you uh, so-called Christians. Because what are the scriptures saying? The Lord is telling, okay, he giving the order for the angels to do what? Slay utterly, mean completely kill them, right? Old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom the mark, which he said up here in verse four, the exemption, and begin at my sanctuary, meaning start at his start at start at the house. It says, then they began, then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. All right, so he's showing you how our Lord get down. The Lord is not biased. Okay, he's not a respecter of persons. A lot of you women and a lot of children are gonna get killed as well. All right. So just getting back to the scripture, Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. If you're not right, how can you be desiring the day of the Lord for Yahweh Shah to come back, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ? How? It says, to what end is it for you? For uh, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house or leaned his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. All right. Because why? Meaning you're not going to escape judgment. It says, as if a man did flee from a lion, meaning he got away from a lion and then he ran into a bear. And then what? He got away from the bear. Or he went into the house and linked his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. So he got away from a lion. He got away from a bear. And then right in his security, going back to Ecclesiasticus, the fifth chapter, and thou security. All right. Um, here it is. He was in his security. He leaned his hand on the wall and he got bit by a venomous serpent. This is representing that you can't get away from the Lord's judgment. All right. You know, today you may uh, get away from the military troops when things get real ugly out here. All right. You may hide out in the woods. You may you may run away from um, you may run away from the, the beasts in the wilderness. You know, you may survive through a famine. But guess what? You're not going to survive against the thermonuclear destruction. All right. Meaning you're not going to get away from judgment, man. You know, and judgment. You got all these pictures here. Judgment. You know, judgment versus judgment. The balance scale. The Lord, our Lord is a just weight. All right. He requires balance. You reap what you sow. All right. Consequences. Just ahead. <laughs> you know, good choice, bad choice. <laughs> you know, the Lord is about to hand out judgments, man. That's why us of the whole four elect, we're praying for mercy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh We're praying that the Lord remember our works. You know, our our, uh, our works and um and our love toward toward this truth. You know, not dragging our foots, man. Putting this truth out there. Um, it says, um, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. All right, because why? This place is gonna be on fire. It's gonna be hell in the streets, man. All right, to the point where Yahweh Shai said in Luke. Uh, I think that's the 17th chapter. He says, shall he find faith on the earth? <laughs> okay. You know, it's going to get so ugly. And people, they're not going to, because they don't, they're ignorant to the knowledge. You know, even if they did want to pray, they won't. Okay. Because it will be no faith. After what your eyes is going to witness, when the Lord gets this place to that point, you know, you're going to want to die, man. But a lot of you, the Lord, gonna, you wicked men, you scoffers. You wicked ass hoes and bitches, all right? You conniving ass women, especially you women that were with brothers in this truth and walk, you know, in, in this truth of, of ours and walked away, you know? Either a lot of you went, you deal with other men now thinking you cool, thinking it's okay, you know? You got other men wifed you up as if, you know, you and him rehearsing the righteous acts, but not telling that man uh, that you were with another brother, you know, in this truth. The Lord got judgment coming, man. You see? <clears throat> so, you know, just be ready, man. <laughs>
Hey, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Uh, he says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your Solomon assemblies. All right, your, your birthdays, your Christmases, your Easter. You got, guess what? We're in quarantine, man. All right, there's a curfew. And it don't look like the Lord, you know, is allowing you to even worship in these um these festivities. You know, he said, I despise your feast days. He said, I hate. Matter of fact, oh, he said, I hate. I thought the Lord didn't hate. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your Solomon assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Okay, so all of your sacrifices that you do, you know, you're praying into Jesus Christ, the Lord not with you, and you're going to clearly see that, all right? When the famine come, lack of food and water, and especially when the famine come of this word, where you're not going to be able to repent, you know, it's going to be left out there, whoever the Lord chooses being those 11 o'clock Israelites, you know, and that's of the Lord's picking. They was just of the chosen. All right. But a lot of you that despise this truth, you mock, you scoff, you misuse the prophets. All right. You um cause a lot of trouble in, in, the, in the brothers lives, you know, a lot of hell, a lot of uh, uh, heartache, pain, you know, made the brothers suffer. Well, judgment is coming unto you, you know. So with that, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachat Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.